मये वसकलम जातम मयि सर्वम प्रतिष्ठितम मयि सर्वम लयम याति तद्ब्रह्मादमयमस्मयम मये वसकलम जातम मयि सर्वम प्रतिष्ठितम मयि सर्वम लयम याति tadbrahmadvayamasmayam from me alone all has risen in me alone all exists in me all dissolves that non dual brahman am i tadbrahma advayam asmi i am that non dual brahman this is the fourth mahavakya where the master is asserting i hold on to that for a little longer ma i am that non dual brahman look at the the tone changes he says mai eva sakalam jatam mai sarvam pratishtitam pratishtitam is everything is based exists in me jatam everything has risen from me everything dissolves into me layam mai sarvam layam yati so look it can either be complete arrogance or complete humility it can't be anything in between that's why i said either this fellow is a completely mad or completely realized yes ma because when you use the word i i i i enna the ego then ha see whenever a, a person uses the word i and i it suggests the individual self because we are identifying with our individuality so when i use the word i it means the individual but when these masters use the first person singular pronoun when they say i and me they don't mean the individuality they mean the self you get what i'm saying so at throughout the different stages or different phases of life in different eras when these masters said come to me the fools just got attached to the personality they didn't think it is the self they spoke about the ignoramus has just got stuck to the personality to the physicality to they formed a cult they formed a movement they formed a, a religion but this truth is beyond cult or movement or religion it is not owned by a personality it is an experience where you and i can feel exactly the same way as these masters have felt so he is emphatically saying why is he emphatically saying because he actually experienced it i am that non dual brahman non dual means ekam i am one i am that one person i am that alone that exists which is as we also said direct perception which is pratyaksha hmm? pratyaksha means direct perception i have a direct experience of that state which is anubhavam i have a direct uh, uh, anubhavam of it and once you have that anubhavam i don't know whether you can feel that conviction in his statement all has come from me all exists in me everything dies in me i am that you got to feel the uh, some vibration must come I don't know. Maybe it's the distance. The vibration is not coming. You come close to me, you will feel the vibration. 
ஒண்ணுமே வரல சார் ஐ டோன்ட் ஃபீல் எனி வைப்ரேஷன் யூ சிட் ஃபார் அவே இன் ஹாங்காங் அண்ட் ஹரேஷ் எக்ஸ்பெக்ட் வைப்ரேஷன் டு கம் ஃப்ரம் இந்தியா சவுத் இந்தியா டு ஆல் தி வே டு ஹாங்காங் யூ ஆர் எக்ஸ்பெக்டிங் லிட்டில் டூ மச் you sit in sydney kashish and then you expect to come there across the sea down under you want it to come uh, it will take time it might reach you by tomorrow but you got to early morning you get up it will come it will reach you by then what a rush so difficult to and it said even suspect there is any truth in it because our standpoint is perhaps far from that we are asserting ourselves to be the small world the limited self our own cocoon which we have created for ourselves isn't it yes far from that is this he says so it's not easy to not difficult to understand the meaning but very difficult to feel what they are saying and that is very difficult to convey is like saying why can't you feel love for a person like you have a love for a person and if another person can't doesn't have that feeling how much ever you may appeal to his head but it can't trigger his heart is rather difficult but one who feels one has a natural feeling for him you can't uh, there's nothing to stop him then you need the buddhi to say don't get attached you know as you all are aware we spent a few days uh, at an event and where i was expected to share the 18 chapters of the gita 18 verses of the second chapter of the gita and i had a completely fresh audience 70 odd people and to a large extent i would say it resonated very well with the majority of them they all clinched it they all were amazed at what depth the text has now why i am referring to that is the kind of um how people have reciprocated to the same thing that was given to them some people looked at it from a very rational perspective some looked at it from a very neutral perspective some people had so much emotion perhaps i have not received such emotion from any one of you and i have not seen them all my life first time i'm seeing them and i, I was completely blown away by the, the kind of emotion the kind of devotion is extremely touching i'm not carried away with that i'm only trying to say i have not planted that emotion i have not planted that in any one of them but each one comes with either you bring your heart to it or you don't bring your heart to it you bring your head to it or don't bring your head to it but when there is either one there is only a limited experience a limited relationship but once you bring your head and heart together with it i think it, it takes you to a what do we call what was the term we used long ago when only your heart gets involved in something when your mind gets involved in something it's called anna gaitima what was that word we used only when your mind gets involved in something what do you call that <clears throat> we always talk marriage between the head and the heart no yes that's an ideal state but when your mind gets involved in something like we have, why are we are talking of this is because here we are talking about you must feel 
what that is being said. When you feel, you may not understand. When you understand, you may not feel. Ideal stages, ideal point is when there's a blend of feeling and intellection. But when only you go by the feeling, what do you experience? High emotion. Padminima said we go through what is known as trance. Am I right, Padminima? Yes. Okay, when intellect and mind both blend, what will happen? It's ecstasy. It's ecstasy. Perfect. Very good, Padminima. So there is a difference between that ecstasy that you experience, which is a grounded experience, we saw a trance, which is a floating experience. You float in it and you get carried away. That is trance. And many people translate trance to a transcendental experience. It is not a transcendental experience. What is it? It is a mental infatuation. You get fascinated with something, you get carried away with it. It is just a mind getting enamored with something and then you get, you, you get lost in it. A mind development attachment in our simple terms, strong terms we use, your mind getting attached and you get carried away with it and that's it, you're blown away. But ecstasy is when there's a blend of head and heart. So, uh, uh, yes, ecstasy. So, ex uh, ecstasy is that spiritual elevated state. So, you all may have the understanding of what this simple phrase means, but you lack the, the capacity to inject emotion into it. So, when you are able to inject, inject emotion into it, then perhaps you'll be able to relate with it far better than how you are able to understand it rationally. Because this is not a rational communication. It's a personal experience. And how do you bring in emotion to it? How do you feel what is said? How do you bring your heart to it? Because by merely mentioning, injecting feeling, it's not going to help you. How should you be able to feel it? That non-dual Brahmanama, Brahmadmayamasmaya. How do I feel it? How should those words reverberate in, in me? Bhakti is feeling now. How do you feel is the question. You're giving only a, a polished word for feeling. Bhakti. How do I feel it? There are people who constantly mutter the, uh, the shlokas. Like I remember uh, when, we, when I came into the hall early as you would, there were days only we both were there in the hall as we entered, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And the Vishnu Sashranamam is going on. And so it's all ingrained in the system because I, yeah, as growing up, Growing up, I knew it, it almost by heart it, but I don't know when I last actually chanted the Vishnu Sasrana, sat and chanted. And as it was going, uh, it just came out. Now, you can mutter the chant, but am I feeling everything that is said? So, mere remembrance is not, uh, mere muttering is not feeling. How do I? 
feel for this knowledge. Ma, Ushama, you are saying dedicating every thought, action. But I'm not talking of action. I'm not talking of thought. I'm talking of feeling. How do I feel? You can think. You can rationalize. Thought process is there. I can relate to what you're saying, sir. But how do I feel it? Like I, can, I, I may be living with my own family or uh, friends, but I may not feel for them. I lack the feeling for them. How do I feel? Gratitude, faith. Again, these are all emotions. You are you're qualifying the emotion. How do I feel? See, I'm I'm primarily asking how do you feel for this knowledge in the context of what is being said? He said, everything has arisen, exists, and dies in me, and I am that. I am that Brahman. The answer is pretty straightforward. You can only feel it to the extent you have experienced it. If you have no experience of it, if you have not either experienced it or attempting to experience, you will not know. There's something called as being in the vicinity of that experience, getting closer to the experience and actually experiencing it. There are how close the proximity of your experience is like if you are seeing the Eiffel Tower and it stands majestic in the city center of Paris and you could see the Eiffel Tower from your hotel, which is maybe a few kilometers away. You can still see the Eiffel Tower, isn't it? If you're on a high rise building, you can clearly see the Eiffel Tower. You're seeing it from a distance. There's vision of it. As you get closer and closer to the Eiffel Tower, the perception becomes clearer, the, the, the actual object becomes vivider. And when you become one with it is where you're actually in the, in the Eiffel Tower, you're taking the lift up, right, go up to the Eiffel Tower. You become one with the Eiffel Tower, one with the tower. Or you're standing right at the foot of it and see, oh my God, what a majestic sight. So you are able to relate to it and experience it. So if I talk I, I felt hard, those who have been there instantly relate to it, isn't it? You are able to feel that experience. You are able to relate to that experience because you have already gone there. Now, exactly the same way, if you are at that stage of the journey where you are in the process of asserting the Brahman, through Swadhyaya, through the sadhana, if you are asserting, you will know what this master is saying. So that feeling can only be injected, only means you can only identify with that experience only if you are in this journey. Otherwise, it's all empty words. It can appeal to a true sadhak. If you are not a sadhak, if you are not aspiring to become this, it will not appeal to you. They are empty words. As Shakespeare says, all the words, 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 he says. They are meaningless words. What do they? Actually, what you read are words. That non-dual Brahman am I. What are they? Words, isn't it? Ah. 
Asha was feeling a little scared. She sent a private message to me. And I made it public. Private message has become public. She's saying it gets scary as you go up, she's saying. Actually, Guruji. Yeah. I scared of this. scared of what? Now what you will see on top. I don't know. It it gets it's a it's it's a giddy experience. This must be the same. Jab koi nazar nahi aata, ek wahi nazar aata hai. You, you get oblivious to everything else. And that's the whole purpose we are going there, isn't it? Just to gain that grand, majestic experience. Everybody has the view of the plane from the planes. How many will have that sight from the, the peak, from a vantage point? And uh, in fact, on the contrary, as the spiritual path is a, a loner's path. And as, as a spiritual person, you're always a loner. And the, you always feel very secure being a loner. I must say that. It's not scary. I would, I would faith disagree with you. Comes no. With faith. no, faith is all, the journey begins with faith. Yeah. It ends with experience. But I'm only commenting to the experience of scariness. There is nothing to be scared. In fact, it's far more assuring. It is so assuring that you want to be in the sanctuary of your own self all the time. You, you detest the din and roar of the marketplace. You detest yes. the hush -bush. You, you You resort, you seek, you withdraw into the sanctuary of your own loneliness. Not loneliness, aloneness. Loneliness is a is a, a negative aspect. Hmm? So there is nothing to be scared. You are very very secure. In fact, you are very assured of what you are doing. In fact, the higher you go, the greater is your vision. The lower you are, narrower is your vision. Because many obstacles, no. As you grow higher, there are no obstacles. The perception is grand, is vast. Mm -hmm. In fact, there's a okay, Ashama. There's a there's a saying that when you expand your vision, the world converges. When you expand your vision, the world converges. So actually, you expand your your perception, the world shrinks. The opposite of that would be, I shrink, the world expands. Exact opposite. But when I expand, the world shrinks. Expand where? Expand from your limitedness to the wholesomeness. Means when I am limited with my own physical individual body, there are many, many individual entities. It becomes so many. The moment I switch from the physical body, I don't identify with the body. I identify with the mind, what happens? Instantly, there is a, a common factor. There are not so many bodies. There are so many people. We are all one. Instantly, there is a, a greater identification. All of them diminish. Identify with the intellect, it still reduces. You identify with the Atman, the entire world becomes one. So when my thoughts have expanded to identify with Brahman, the entire world becomes, the whole world shrinks to a very small aspect. 
but when my thoughts shrink when i am narrow the world becomes a huge competition are you able to relate to the idea so to say that non dual brahman am i you must expand to such a high level to say that i am that truth it's like simply the ocean is talking the waves exist born exist and die in me matter of fact the entire world has emerged from me exist in me and die in me what authority what authority ho oh. so you identify with the self you become that non dual self so what we are saying is right go beyond the egoistic view to take a totalistic view so look at life not from an egoistic view take it from a, a totalistic view any situation any aspect of life it should it should help you relate to your situation if you approach it that way from a, a egoistic view to a a totalistic view and a totalistic view would have two to view your life from two standpoints which is the horizontal view and the vertical view so if you if one can look at life how do you look at life vertically and horizontally so how do you first look at horizontal view horizontal view vis a vis what i am going through today vis a vis what i have gone through all my life in the past oh, sorry not in my life horizontal view is looking at my life with reference to everybody's experiences around me in the whole society in your community in the state in the country in the region in your hemisphere and then humanity at large example i say if i have lost a job how would you process it horizontally kashish hi om guru ji going by what you just said i imagine it would be kind of comparing your current experience with losing a job or the grief or the stress that that brings up and kind of looking at how did maybe my parents deal with this similar situation when they lost their jobs or my friends around me have they gone through similar experiences how did they get through it putting that experience in proportion with other people and then expanding being like is there a greater like connection to that is it because people are getting laid off because of a specific thing or like are other people going through similar experiences and then expanding outward and putting that pain in proportion to what everyone else is going through so as you said so many people would have lost their job because of this pandemic so many people have become jobless 
So if you take the statistics, you might say, oh, in my own country, close to 200,000 people have lost their jobs in the last two weeks. Okay. So what happens? My job, me losing my job, vis-a-vis, -vis, one amongst the 200,000 having lost their job. So what are you doing to your loss? You're diluting it, dividing it by 200,000. So what happens to your suffering? It becomes that decimal insignificant suffering. Right? Oh, you'll say, oh, my boyfriend said no to me. Oh, so many failures have happened. So many people have endured all those things. This is one more such case of lack of trust or lack of love or lack of whatever. So I should not be heartbroken. You are able to understand and then pass it. Push it away. What is my suffering compared to all the suffering in the world? What is my joy compared to all the people's joy in the world? What is my gain compared to everybody's gain? Nothing. So why am I getting carried away? So you gain. So I'm only trying to say how you can apply this concept of. Ramji, what are we trying to apply here? We are trying to apply the concept of. Is feeling for the total from you are, I mean, you are expanding your vision and then feeling going beyond your own self uh, and experience. It. Expanding your vision to see the totality, to go beyond yourself, isn't it, sir? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So, uh, can you give any more examples to? So we can relate to it. We took example of a job. We took an example of a love failure. Extremity, any examples? I think the greatest extremity which happened is the pandemic. But uh, I think there will be things like um, um, wars or uh, economic uh, meltdowns and then depressions, economic depressions, which affect a large parts of the world uh, so no, those no. are all the kinds of but things how do you, how can you take a, a horizontal view to what your life and makes you to go through or you'll have to endure the extremity of that could be no that is the most difficult part because your experience at the end of the day is your own experience in the sense that we might dilute it by thinking of the whole, but uh, uh, you still have to manage your own experience, right? So, but will this will this injection of this thought process not minimize or efface the? It that's will. what we say. It so, will. It will. if imagine if you don't do this, it it be, feels as if the whole world has world is, on, yeah, the, on your you know, head, yeah, on your head, and then it thinks everything shrinks to that moment. Correct, correct. So, if you say, "Man, it's all right. Everybody is going through that phase. It's less or more." Right. So, let me let me right. go through it. Let me sail through it. Right. So that uh, diminishes or reduces the weight on you, and uh, mm. you can. So this feeling, what we talked about earlier, you will feel uh, better for the whole world in that sense. Yeah, yeah. You know what I felt? Uh, in, it was a health retreat we had gone. Rajima, imagine everybody thinking, oh, it's not that I only have diabetes. So many other people also have got diabetes and all other health problems. So Shivaji, I am okay. No need to worry because everybody also is going through the same thing. <laughs> Yeah. So otherwise, so Ningna, you will say, okay, thank you very much. I am a little lighter. It's not that I am only having diabetes. Everybody also has these problems. <laughs> Everybody suffering. In fact, the speaker Guruji asked us to raise the hand <laughs> to suffer from diabetes, and we had almost half the hall putting their hand up. 
Correct. Uh, more than more than half the hall. Everybody is looking around to uh, <laughs> who else suffers from that. So, Correct. Experience. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, uh, uh, Ramji, you know, uh, it was very very hard that hit you when whenever you go to a crematorium. Hmm? The yeah. extreme is to lose your near and dear, and you have to go to the crematorium to do that, the last funeral rite, whatever you do. But what do you notice there? There is so many other bodies which come there. Yeah. So, so many it is, people uh, yeah. come there. What is my loss compared to everybody's loss? What is my pain compared to everybody's pain. So many people are also going through pain and suffering. It is a, what we call a leveler. It levels your mind to what happens in the other part of the world. Or, yeah. Correct. It, it, it's a great level. Life is a great level, isn't it? But we'll have to uh, inject this to infuse this knowledge so that 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 leveler becomes expedited. Correct, sir. Otherwise, we have to unnecessarily go through the pain. Hmm? Unnecessarily, unnecessarily go through pain. So this is the horizontal view. Now the vertical view would be Harish. What would be the vertical view to anything that you're going? Let's say if you have had a failure. Uh, in the moment, and it could be in your business, it could be in your life. Or it, so let's talk of a generic failure. Okay. How do you look at it horizontally? Horizontally, we sorry, see I mean I, I mean vertically. Vertically, you're right. Sorry. Hurry up, Guruji. Vertically, we see it as we magnify to our personal experience, we magnify it uh, versus generalizing it. We say we go through a very high and low emotion with our experiences. So if we have a loss, for example, we magnify the loss that why me? And we take it very personally. We take it very intensely versus we make a very high profit. Then we also go into an ecstasy mode and egoistic mode that I'm the biggest success story. So we go through a very extremity of those elements in the vertical platform. It's about the I factor. Why me or why not me, for example? Mm. With our experiences of any sort. Yeah, but how do you dilute it? If you say why me and why not me, you're still extremely egoistic. You're extremely self-centered. Your, your attention is only on yourself. But how right. do I dilute it? We are trying to dilute that I by going horizontally and going vertically. So if I have had a, an extremely, ex, an experience which has hurt my ego so badly now, how do I dilute that from a vertical perspective? So yesterday, as I said, a few days, last few days, we were with, at, at a place conducting a workshop, receiving so many words of appreciation and things. Imagine if that was happening in my life for the first time, what would happen? You'd probably be very overwhelmed with the Probably would be very overwhelmed, get carried away, get excited. But if this has come many a time in your life, how would you treat it? It is just another experience, isn't it? Yes, it's one of the many. One of the many I've had. You know, I was just trying to put a math to how many hours I would have spent in the text studying preparing, doing my studies for the last 30 years. And I said, because, you no, know, no, why I was drawn to that calculation and I was doing that in the lecture itself, Rajiv Mahavad. Lalji was saying, I have put in five years of steady research on it. If you want, you can go and 
put your study research and spend 30,000 hours, something, 40,000 hours, something, he said. So then I said, oh, that's an interesting way of doing a little bit of, uh, not that he was marketing, but just to say what you have done. Either you go by this many hours of research or you take up study and find out for yourself what the truth is. Then I said, Gatrima, I took the calculator, mental calculator, and I said, okay, on an average, if I sit four, four and a half hours a day, which is two, three sessions minimum, I said, talking, lecturing, sit, sitting, studying, writing, and all. That was, I was being a little liberal. So four and a half hours a day. Harish, have you got your calculator out? Uh, yes. You don't need a calculator, I mean, you're a businessman. <laughs> no, uh, businessman, taking a cal businessman taking calculator is insult to being a businessman. <laughs> uh, okay, so four and a half hours a day into one week is how many hours? 31.5. Into 30 days? 945. Into 12 months? 11,340. Oh, sorry. Huh? 11,340. No, no, they, they're correcting sorry. me. Rajima, what is that? My, my mathematics is wrong. Guruji, Ramji? if it's days, it has to continue with days. Oh, okay. It has to be 365 days. Ah, okay. Uh, multiply that by? Okay, what multiply? Half multiplied by 365. Ah, okay. Multiply. Uh, what? Multiply what? Uh, four, and four, and half, uh, four and a half multiplied by this. Four and a half was multiplied by 365. What is that? Just around 1400 something. Now, how do you. Uh, what is yeah, the trigger, six, Arish? Four and a half times 365 is 1642. Hmm. Okay, how do you multiply it by 30 years? Times 30? Yeah. 49,275. Hmm. So I will say, on average, I would have spent 50,000 hours. That's all, huh? I should start putting more sadhana. This is a being little liberal, generous when I said four and a half hours. So if I have put in so many hours of study, if I have been addressing so many diverse audiences and how many people I've seen, why should I get carried away by one point of encouragement or one word of appreciation or few words of appreciation or few words of lack of appreciation? You will look at it vertically you will stay grounded. You don't get swept away. You will not get carried away. But obviously, you will relate to the moment. You are in that moment. Not being there is not playing the role. It's like if an actor has to cry on the stage, he'll cry on the stage. He'll make you feel actually he's actually crying. That's what an actor is, isn't it? You will inject that, that joy. You'll inject that life into that situation because you have to play that role as an actor. But inwardly, you will not get In fact, I said to them, I'm only a guru to you all. In fact, I'm not even a guru. I was told to come and talk. They were not even expecting that kind of, uh, uh, that uh, this Gita is being introduced to them. So they were not even ready for it. So when they came to the session, they said, hey, this is a pleasant surprise. It was a pleasant surprise. Not that anybody would complain about it. Not that I know of. Shiva, you should give us a feedback to me. Nobody complained about it. So it's a pleasant surprise. So when they came to this experience, they all looked up to the knowledge. They all inwardly respected you. Some addressed you, whatever it may be. But post the stage, what role should I play? That's why I told to them, I'm only a guru to you on the stage. But once I'm off the stage, I will not adorn the role of a guru and be I am a sakha. I am a friend. I am an acquaintance because I don't know you. How, how can I take the role of a guru and uh, continue that role? And actually, Shivaji, actually, two, three people have come and told me how you are able to be the normal self, be with us as a, as a layman. And in fact, there were people, were people putting their shoulders around me and then hugging me and things like that. They felt so so much normal self. I said, I was not offended by that love or that uh, that fondness that they expressed. And they many, were strangers. Many, many said you are not like a guru. 
Oh, many said not like not a guru at all. So oh, so glad. easy, so comfortable yeah. for them to come and reach, which is ah, not sir. the case with any guru. Very difficult for anyone to. They have that uh, circles oh, around them, and then people would not no access. They never. They felt so comfortable. I don't think anyone would feel that comfortable. Even they had to ask you some difficult questions, hard questions, or stupid questions. They're easy, like. Uh, they could come and communicate in fact to be very honest with you i just even shared it this added value to the whole course the whole course became complete purnam in fact the purnam idea was given by uh, lali ji he said do that he i did not know he just called before leaving he said do that purnam and he went he didn't tell me anything he said do that fair enough it was so oh, really because it added it, it completed complemented the whole thing that what we were there for and then it completed beautifully no it was a huge value addition for the course and in fact i had attended this the second session we know in the last session we were feeling a lot of drained people were feeling drained so much of a knowledge i know somebody so much of information so much of information but this time they didn't feel because of one more beautiful element to take them into their own self that added beauty to the whole program there's no doubt about it and it looks like this could be a permanent thing in all the future retreats that may happen that's already the indications are so clear right really appreciate that it was a it was a it was it was a blessing in disguise to to reach out to these so many people and guide them because they they were not prepared for it you know so i was the only thing i was trying to refer to it is when you play the role you got to you got to play it so much so as if in fact uh, um, i got uh, uh, feedback from our mms mms told me that what did you tell me pushpa ma she said i am not my normal self something has gone wrong with guruji she said vinay ji something wrong with you she said we can't hear you pushpa ma it's not now you can yeah we can hear you what guru ji i tell so many things and i appreciate appreciate in so many ways what no no what uh, no no i know i know i am not uh, i am not putting in, in any uh, serious note at all so what she was saying in a lighter note is i express my no 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 i am not misreading you i am just saying <laughs> what she said was guru ji i think you are doing little more drama extra drama there she was saying <laughs> rajima do you agree i uh, see rajima laughing means that's the truth what rm guru ji to probably uh, retain the attention of the crowd a little more of uh, you know this class is a more serious kind of a you know uh, students there you had to gain their attention so uh, a little more of expressiveness or as you call it drama i didn't say it <laughs> <laughs> i said it <laughs> no it's so important to play the role in the way they can understand i can't be this self they would have been completely gone it would have been an utter flop shivaji if i played the tone with which i speak the subject matter uh, and if i had done in this kind of a tone there it would have been a failure but i had to play the role be the way i was so what we are saying is you you are very well grounded you should one should be grounded so when you have that little maturity or wisdom to be able to process every phase of your life through the horizontal view and the vert vertical view and the horizontal view the present moment doesn't really haunt you the present moment doesn't really 
affect you or torment you it passes so what we are doing is we are trying to dilute the ego the concentration you would have so what we are actually concluding to this point is when you lack the horizontal and the vertical view the ego is maximum on you the attention is maximum on you when you lack the vertical and horizontal view and as you grow and expand your vision you keep diluting your little self to a point where there is no self at all then you say that brahman am i that non dual brahman am i okay 20 please uh, uh sorry i think uh uh gayatrima uh, uh hari ji has been wanting to say something sorry hari sir and i think you also posted a question earlier is it the question the question hari ji is asking is can we get identification without the application of our intellect because finally there is no difference between gnanam and bhakti no sir there is no difference there is a difference between gnanam and bhakti but gnanam and bhakti merge with that culmination of experience which is one the parts taken with gnanam and bhakti are different where you feel or rationalize these two elements of feeling and rationality are two different routes to get to the same experience but one once there is a blend between the head and the heart almost they feel as if they are two they are not two but one but actually they are two separate things that's why we say the heart and head must be in sync and can we get identification without the intellect no intellect is essential that was we differentiated when the mind alone your uh, uh your mind without the application of intellect uh, then the identification becomes difficult sir theoretically it's possible practically it's not possible because not no possible. human being is entirely emotional or entirely intellectual even the most intellectual person in this classroom will have some feeling in him sure. even the most emotional person in this classroom will have some ray of intellect in that person no, so for for identification as such the extreme application of the intellect is required though emotionally when when we are talking about the identification i am one with him mm -hmm. that is the culmination of my intellect you know when the intellect uh, It, it, it can't be traces of intellect it has to be extreme application of intellect <clears throat> now because we are telling that i i am it uh, at the end of the day uh, we are identifying and identification happens only when i intellectually conceive the thing yes there is no difference between me and him sir as a intellectual person you are rationalizing this very thought of the identification with the self when the mind itself is drawn to the higher there is no need for it to to pull the mind out of its lower attachments and plant it on the higher a bhakta a bhakta when he utters the word rama or krishna you know that that person's heart melts yeah like like whenever i see the message of ashrama where she says prabhu ram ji ki krupa bani rahe Uh, the when you read that way she has uttered those words itself your heart melts even if i have a, i'm angry with ashama i can all that anger also goes away ha uh, prabhu ram ji ki krupa bani rahe where is intellection there tell me i'm not saying she has no intellect or she is not rational person but she is injecting that emotion there is so much devotion that feeling there but when you sing when, sir when you singing a bhajan are you rationalizing a bhajan sir intellect in fact you should not use the intellect put it intellect in the outside the classroom and enter a bhajan that is when you feel the bhajan you should 
get so soaked invigorated so much that you start people start uh, you know tears silent people introverted people will start silently sitting and crying the extroverted people will start doing dancing it will become a zumba dance <laughs> a spiritual zumba they can't contain that emotion that's the reason they 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 become expressive but introverted people they are silently wiping a tear or they just just so deep appreciation of that feeling that was invoked through a, a bhajan it is you have to feel so uh, it is not intellect alone that will identify yeah, with sure. the thought of the yeah. self yeah. you can identify with the with the emotion but the the ideal thing is because blend of uh, intellect and heart intellection and. and heart and head okay sir i yeah, yeah, one yeah. i let me let me complete this yeah, now, yeah, why please. why what is the benefit of having head and heart if it is heart alone heart develops fanaticism yeah so you need the intellect to get out of the fanaticism so heart without head tantamounts to fanaticism true head without heart leads to ahankar arrogance true stupid adu or stupidity adu yeah so to ensure the loophole so the problem with intellect is arrogance and the problem with bhakti is fanatic attachment to a particular form or my guru or or uh, my practice and you think when you do that that alone is the greatest thing oh my guru is the best guru in the world there is no greater than him everybody else are all chalk and cheese are if you have an affinity to a guru or your ashram does it mean that is the best thing in the world to happen uh, you are announcing and pronouncing your attachment to the world and say you must do this you must do that you must come there are you may feel that others may not feel that no that is fanaticism okay so that's the reason you need to have two elements in the in the in the path True. yes sir yeah and uh, about the vertical and horizontal view ama Uh, when we are having extreme vertical view that means i am i am trying to be uh, thinking only about me it is uh, i am not trying to expand my view i'm just like how you said that i am contracting and is it not that most of the suicidal cases happens because of their extreme vertical view because they are able to see only their problem their worries their happiness they are not able to see uh, i I, I, th- i think you have you are misinterpreting the vertical view oh ah, okay. okay please uh, i'll yeah. have to mute you sir because there is a uh, echo comes that time i just mute uh, hari ji i'll explain this now i i even see you noted in the chat when you take a vertical view what you are actually doing is you are sir if i had a failure today i am only saying this failure it's not my first failure and this is not going to be my last failure i have had many such failures in my life i will have many such challenges and failures in my life so the failure i'm having now is just of the many i've had so why am i getting to obsessed with my loss why am i getting bogged down with my loss why am i getting affected my loss you get it so you do, you do take it in your stride you take it in your spirit and say it will pass let me not be so affected by it so the vertical view and the horizontal view both help you to minimize the impact which would be maximum if you take a egoistic view in other way what we learn as apohanam apohanam is forgetfulness if you have the freshness of all the sufferings you have had in the past if you have to remember it as a fresh now what would happen finished you can't sit we can we can conduct ourselves we become completely paralyzed 
So what this both views help us is to dilute the situation and say, come on, yeah, you think your life only has problems? Come, I'll come and take you and show you others' lives. You only have money? Uh, you only have knowledge? Your house only is the best house? Your children are the best? Your grandchildren are only existing? Is this all life is for you? Come, I'll take you and see you, uh, see, show you the world, show you the world beyond your, your own creative cocoon, a frog in the well, and come out. It can't fathom the vastness of the ocean. My child, my grandchild, my home, my wealth, my money, my degree, my life, my goals. Sick and tired of the word I and my. But you should not get sick and tired when he says, Aham Brahma, I am that non-dual Brahman. So in the I, this purity, that I is suffocating, is so chi. This is suffocating, this is invigorating. Sir, if at all my English has improved, there were a lot of English professors there in that retreat. So I learned little English from them. Correct, Ashivaji. So one eye is suffocating, another eye is invigorating. It has to inspire you. All right. So make that switch from the small eye to the big eye. That's the message in the 19th verse. That's when you feel all the messages from the absolute standpoint. But we are saying only when you switch the, from the small eye to the bigger eye, you start feeling the, the intensity or the feel of that statement when he says, Tad Brahma Dvayamasmayam, that non-dual Brahmanamai, you will be able to feel only when you make that switch from the vertical to the horizontal. Of a vertical horizontal, you make that switch from the small eye, get to... It's not even getting there. It's, 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 the, it's the process of getting there itself is very refreshing. You will be able to relate to what he's saying. All right. Now, just for your information, we will, you'll have to excuse me. We'll have no class. Next weekend, we'll have no classes, the Saturday and Sunday, uh, actually, as I'm traveling. So uh, you will, we will, uh, you will be all to be reminded of the, of the no satsang the following weekend. Uh, we will come back after a fortnight. Okay. So wishing you all a very happy and a, a glorious Diwali in advance. Okay. Namaskar. Om Pur Namada Pur Namidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Hari Om Thank you.